So thank you guys so much for doing this. I'm, I'm honored to be part of this. Uh, I'm going to start with the, the co-directors, Afshin. This was how long in the making? You, right now, you must be like, ah, finally, it's done. Yeah, actually, it's been, what, eight years. And, and it started with Glenn and Tommy's collaboration, which you guys saw in the film. And so before we even thought about making a documentary or filming, they had started collaborating on art and making the, the beautiful pieces that you saw uh, in the film. Um, and then Glenn reached out to me and said, uh, Tommy has uh, some incredible stories that he's been sharing with me and, and is open to us filming it and seeing where it goes. So it was a labor of love and, and it took about seven years um, based on Tommy and Glenn's collaboration. Glenn, was this a passion project for you? It seems like it was. Yeah, I'd say it started, I mean, it was, you know, as you saw in the film, like, Tommy was always on the top of my vision board, you know, symbol, and, and, and when the chance came to meet him and then uh, to, to collaborate with him, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty much uh, unexpected and, and yeah, a, a dream. But I think also it, it quickly for Efshin and myself and uh, turned into also a sense of responsibility and obligation to, to really, um, you know, put forth this story because we felt that the access that we were getting to Tommy's great stories um, that the, you know, our generation hadn't seen yet and the generation now hadn't heard. Uh, and and uh, it, it was uh, equal parts passion project, but also sense of responsibility for us to be the stewards of his trust. And that was a big, a big deal for us. So. Well, I got that from, uh, from the film. And then w when I saw the, the cast of The Arm and when, what, Tommy, when you started talking about, what did you, you said this was class muscles, um, you call them. You know what? I know a lot about Black history, but I, I don't think I've ever heard that. That says a lot about you too, brother. Well, yeah, that, that there's a lot of things about me and, and, and where I came from, how I lived, that uh, it wasn't taken before, but it's taken on the film. And uh, that will be shared. Uh, so you hear some things that uh, only your great, great grandmother or granddaddy would talk about. Uh, it's very interesting. And eight years is a long time, actually, and you're right. I see I'm only nine. So, you know, I was, I was a young guy when I started this. But it, it's very interesting. And the things that uh, you will see in here is going to be appalling, especially to uh, people who uh, think Tommy Smith was just fast and had no brains. Mm -hmm. You'll find uh, out. Did, 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 you, did you have to relive this when you were doing this? Did you feel like you were reliving the entire thing? From an, from an artistic uh, uh, venture, it was new to me. I had to dig a little bit deeper to find out what I was really about because no one ever taught me that there was another side of me except what people wanted to pick out and know. But I had to find myself in this film to know who I was. And mm -hmm. that was the reality of my believing that this is a true film and not a film of expectation of somebody else of brilliant thoughts. This, yeah. this is my thoughts. Well, when I get to interview you on television, right, I usually see you from the, the waist up. And I, as I was watching this film, I was like, my gosh, look at Tommy's legs. I mean, you're like a flamingo uh, <laughs> in, in this thing. They should have been casting your legs. I, I know, um, Jesse, you know, the, the question is, why would you want to get involved? But the thing is, I mean, why not? This was a no brainer, right? Yeah, oh, without question. I mean, one of- By the way, Jesse's an executive, co-executive producer along with John Legend. Sorry, Jesse, go on. No, no worries. Um, yeah, I mean, not only is, you know, it's Tommy Smith, for God's sake, right? He's one of, right. one of not only a, a personal hero, but how often, and I could probably count on a few fingers, um, you know, is, is a, a person and their body and a moment and series of moments an actual icon and a, a visual icon that you can tell that you can spot from any distance that um is the poster on your wall whether literally or figuratively that that um was the embodiment of personal and social responsibility of bravery of sacrifice a uh, very popular term these days um and risk and doing it at your height literally at the height of your career um putting people over personal like profit and gain, um, kind of reckless abandon, true heroism, all the things that we, that qualify a Marvel superhero, um, right. all the things that are, that are by definition heroic um, uh, in a human, in a person. And what an incredible journey, you know, as Tommy indicated, you know, he's always artistically, he had a new experience 
on this project. And, and just background, I, I know and work with uh, Glenn and Afshin for, for some time, so I certainly trusted the filmmakers and whose hands this was in. You see, you see Glenn's piece behind me uh, of Tommy, one of the early ones. Um, no, that's beautiful, just which is beautiful. Everybody in my house, it's like, I've got a lot of amazing art, everybody flocks to this thing and it's it's really staggering experience. is that a humble brag there jesse but that's okay. it's a brag for glenn it's a brag for glenn. oh oh the, well yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my point my point was that it's so dope amongst the, amongst amazing great work but um you know there's something that that Tommy said you know he's always he had an experience through we always see it we see him he sees it through his point of view he never saw himself do this in 68 right. He saw the rest of the world and he saw the rest of the world tell him what he did, what it means, what it means, what it means. And for us to be able to walk through the experience of hey, that kind of becomes real to you. You know, as somebody who's in the spotlight, people tell me what I mean to them or what I, I did means to them. It can become part of your memory of what you actually did. And mm -hmm. to kind of deconstruct that through this process, biographical exploration um, has been really fascinating to see, to really learn about how it really impacted him. And we have these heroes, we lift them up and then we move on. But where, where are they? What do they do? Right. What, what are they a year later, 20 years later? What's their sibling? What's their parent? Um, is anybody looking out for them? Yeah. But, well, the thing is, is, as I was watching this, it reminds me of what you guys watch every night, right? Speaking of watching, right? And reliving what you guys watch me do on the news every night, if you tune in, talking about how sports is affecting what's going on with, with race, with culture, with with justice there was no no playbook for tommy smith right there was no no playbook for for you guys uh, for, and for john carlos but now we have colin kaepernick and the story is the same this man has lost his career much like tommy you did you were working in the car wash he's not doing that but still he can't get a job now the same booze that i heard from you at the Olympics, I'm hearing now at football games, right? Yeah. So what does this feel like for you now, Tommy, to, to, to actually see this happening again? Kind of, you know, uh, Don, kind of bittersweet, uh, kind of sweet for the, the guys who have, have, have uh, expected this to happen. Be kind of bitter for the guys that's happening too. <clears throat> I'm just so, so, so happy to be a part of bringing them along for them understanding uh, such things as sacrifice. I know uh, that uh, Jesse mentioned with reckless abandon, which is a, a very pointed uh, 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 analogy of what really happened. And the points of view, which he also alluded to, which is from someone else like Glenn with the mind that uh, Glenn Kano has, it brings it all together and you can walk out on a bridge that leads to you to another bridge of understanding. And this is a great thing about the whole the whole movie that it picture or picturizes, I won't, I won't say a, a, a caricaturize it, but picturize it moving to that point to cross over. And I'm very excited to see what's gonna happen after this movie appears because it's a whole different world of mm -hmm. excitement to reality. And I yeah. can't wait. Gwen, I mean, the parallels of what's happening today obviously not lost on, on you and we see them throughout this film. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and you know, to, to the point of the time and the duration, you know, when we first started on the process, I mean, we could not have predicted, I mean, it was before Colin took the knee and it was before, you know, obviously before George Floyd. Um, and when we, the questions that we were getting when we were starting the project, because we, you know, actually, and I like to say, as a, from the filmmaker's perspective, we tried to raise money, obviously, we ended up being the film that art funded because I would, you know, try to sell a piece of artwork and use that to, to make the movie. And so we, we kind of made it out of the studio. Um, but, but in that process, um, you know, we, we had to, in the first four years, like, right, I've seen, I've explained to people like why, we're, why we care about the story. And we said, you know, in as much as y'all think that things have changed, things haven't changed, then Colin would happen. And Tommy and I would literally, we had a lecture the night after Colin took the knee and we were at the High Museum on an early lecture and talking about Colin. And then, you know, fast forward to us finishing the movie, you know, and then George Floyd, you know, it, it is uh, a very, you know, as paradoxically heartbreaking and empowering timing for us to put this out into the world, um, you know, while this moment of need is happening. I've seen a little, little watch Yeah, someone, uh, yeah, someone, someone is, their, their um, audio is a little loud, so you're getting feedback. I think it's probably, maybe I've seen. Nope. 
Oh, you got headphones on, so I don't know why. But anyways, let's move on. I mean, this is a Zoom world. People are used to it. Yeah. So, um, you know, given what, what, uh, what, what David, um, I'm sorry, what, what Gwen just talked about, when I was watching the film and Tommy is describing, he says, you know, I got there, he had to, he had to pull the muscles, right? And then um, he's about to run. And he said, on, on your mark, get set. And then he said, silence. Right, and it was silent, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, here it is!" And then that, I started to tear up in that moment. And when he starts talking about, it, and I said, "My my arms have never gone faster, and my legs have never moved higher." And uh, Ashin, you must have. Did you feel like all this stuff that he went through, all this footage that you have, the story that if you if you screwed this up, you were going to let a whole lot of people down. You had to do this right. Yeah, I think, I think as Glenn said, you know, feeling like stewards of, of Tommy's legacy, um, we had to get it right. And we, Glenn and I went back and forth and, and there's quite a few kind of edits for us to make sure that we honed in truly on his story. And, and to your earlier point, part of the struggle in, in trying to tell people what this film was as, as we were making it and trying to raise funds for it was people thought it was a, story, a sports story. And they're like, oh, we already know that story. They didn't know of his struggle. Uh, after that moment. There was no precedent for Tommy uh, when he stood up and, and made that protest. Right now, a lot of the athletes, and it doesn't make it any less, but there is a precedent. They've seen it happen. They know the risks. Tommy was just, you know, out there by himself, risking everything mm -hmm. uh, and not knowing what was going to end up on the other side. And, and hopefully the film shows um, the price that he paid, but also kind of the rebirth and, and the, um, the amazing work that he's doing still. I've, I've got a question for this on the, um, on the back end for Jesse, because uh, as it relates to celebrity, but I want to ask you, Tommy, um, you talked about your worst moments, right? When you're on the coffee table and the blood and um, who is it that, ha that has to come and bring you back to your roots? I forget who it was in the film. It was a family member, right? Oh, it was. Tommy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh... Um, actually, uh, my daughter and my wife, really, I yeah. sent them away. I sent them away to get, get away from me because I had too many things boiling on the inside and couldn't get out. That's people don't know that about, people don't know the lows that you had no. because of this. And here you are, you said, I think you said you had 11 world records, but you were working in a car wash and you were miserable and you could barely get a job and you were but you divorced. People don't know how much this took out of your life. Uh, it was a, a total, uh, the, the word was used, rebirth of uh, Tommy Smith uh, into a, a place where I had never gone before, which it which was about the uh, upcoming of another person, which I didn't know. And that's what we're trying to find out, we're going to find out in this movie, and mm -hmm. the beginning, the middle, and the end up until where we were when we finished it. Not now. Uh, uh, Don, if you want to talk about that later on another show, that would be interesting. So it would this movie would take you up to that time, and <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna disconnect my phone, Don, okay? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, the reason I asked him about that is because um, you know how it is to be in the public eye. And um, you know now we have, people who are like us, you know, back then um, in, in the film, it says there were no regularly scheduled uh, yeah. black TV yeah. shows, right? You had the yeah. news and people telling yeah. people story uh, like Tommy Smith. But now you have, we have support from people. Tommy didn't have that. Can you imagine dealing with celebrity or dealing with what he dealt with without the support structure? Um, that you and I may have right now, because the whole world came down on him. That's right. No, no, we, we, we simply, we haven't lived it, so we can't, uh, we can only imagine it. Uh, we certainly can't relate to it. And I would, you know, add to that is that, you know, Tommy wasn't playing one of the top three major sports, which would put him on t TV every week or every other week. It's not baseball, it's not basketball, it's not football, it doesn't have a huge preseason, and then all these endorsements. It's the Olympics, which you have to kill yourself to get into once. And it happens once every four years and you get one to four events in that one Olympics <laughs> once every four years. If, it's a very, very narrow eye of a needle for you to have a moment. 
Um, and to give that moment to someone else, to everyone else, instead of yourself, is an, is an absolute different league of sacrifice than, make, than, and I mean, I obviously don't mean to diminish anybody else's efforts, of course. I'm just, cat, right, just right. really just putting some perspective here. It's not wearing a t-shirt or making a gesture before one of 82 games or 36 games or 16 weeks of my sport. It's once. Period. That's it. Um, and, you know, so, so that's, that's a big deal. Um, uh, and, you know, I would also say what comes to mind uh, reliving this through our work is also that we fall in love with an image or a moment, a black and white photo of Dr. King, a black and white photo of something, some old, you know, eye on the prize image, the, the image of, of, of Tommy and, and John Carlos. But then what about the person when he's walking past you in the grocery right. store or on the street? Like, do you even realize that it's, you know, an icon is actually flesh and blood? Um, that, that was really, I think, one of the spark uh, goals of this project was to re rehumanize somebody who gave his humanity to us and asked us of nothing in return and gave us a chance to really think about what happens after that camera flash. Um, so, and well, I don't know if we nailed that. Well, I think, listen, you, and you brought up something that reminds me in the film that, um, that Tommy, in order to do what Tommy had to do, he had to win. Exactly. He had to, so like you were saying, threading that you had this one little eye of a needle that you had to thread in order to accomplish all of this. And then in the end, you said, what have I done? What have I done? When you got back, they wanted to take your, your medal. And you said you guys wouldn't let him take it. And then you got back and there was no one and nothing waiting for you there. With, with, with the, uh, the, the type of technology that was then and now, uh, I can uh, partially reason why there was none. Uh, but uh, yeah. it didn't help me feel any better with my wife and John Carlos and his wife coming back. The booze on camera, our wives being almost thrown on the floor just so the cameras could get to us. Very demoralizing, very saddening, mm -hmm. very uh, in insulting and embarrassing. Uh, for the sake of humanity. Uh, yeah, that, uh, Don, you mentioned that eye of a needle. You're right. You're right. It was like an octopus going through a two-inch hole. I might get <laughs> a two-inch day in two days, but I'm going to get through that little eye of a needle and pull everybody into it I possibly can. And that was my dilemma on that victory stand. All the time that I fought to get there, you know, there wasn't just one race. There were a plethora of races I had to run to exactly. get to that victory stand and to run that race on a pull muscle, get to the victory stand, and then pray that yeah. nothing else wow. to me. 24 years old. I mean, come on. I knew I was from the cotton field of Clarksville, Texas, to the victory stand in Mexico City. But when you got to go through an eye of a needle, as big as I was, and I did have bones, I wasn't boneless, it was right. very difficult. Well, well, I, you, I, but you say, know what? You know, the Lord's Prayer got you through it. Hey, Jesse, yeah. I know that you have to go. So yeah. did you want to respond to him? Um, I, I did, uh, but I lost my darn train of thought. So go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll jump in. I'll tell one, I'll tell one yeah. fun story that based on, on Jesse's right. note, which was about like when you walk past the man, what happens? One, Don, to go back to the first question, one of the impetuses also yeah. for us to make the movie was Tommy and Delos and I were walking to the Studio Museum of Harlem for an exhibition of the first bridge when it wasn't that big. And we walked by- 125th Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, right yeah. here. I'm on 123rd yeah, okay. Street right okay. now looking at the Apollo. That's where I live. Okay, so, so, so the vendors in, the, <laughs> the vendors in front, like about two doors down, there's a t-shirt vendor. And he had a t-shirt, not this shirt, but a shirt with, with Tommy on it. And, we, and Delos and I were walking by and, and we said, hey, Tommy Smith shirt. And the guy was like trying to sell us a shirt, right? And so I said, I said, do you know who that guy is? I pointed at the Tommy, I said, do you know who that guy is? He said, his name is Carl. I said, no, I said, do you know what his name really is? He says, he gave me five other names. And I said, no, his name is Dr. Tommy Smith. I said, do you know who this is? And he says, no, who's that? He tried to sell Tommy a shirt of himself. <laughs> and so uh, we went back there and we said, you know what? We're going to do two things right now because we realized that Tommy never made money off of a shirt that had his image on it. So we made this and these are all goes to Tommy. And then we also said, we need to tell this story because if we're walking down the street in Harlem 
and a man trying to sell Tommy Smith a shirt of himself, we need to figure out how to go do something. So that was just another one of the oh. little emphasis. So. Interesting. Huh? Well, listen, I just want to say this because, I mean, if we can continue on, I would appreciate it. But Jesse, I think I, I, I want to let you go because I know we all have schedules and it's, and it's crazy now. So we certainly understand. But I want to thank you for making this happen. Because yeah. we don't. Sometimes we don't think the producers are enough because they actually make help these things come to fruition. So Jesse, thank you and um, for doing this. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, thank you for for helping us lift it up. The incredible filmmakers um, encourage anybody who's 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 watching and listening to uh, make a point to to track us down. See us as we release. You will see us on your screen shortly. Um, and uh, you know, give them as you say, give them their flowers while they're still here. That's what that's what Glenn and Afshin set out to do. Um, you know, Tommy's an icon living, and we have we have uh, a few of them, very, very, very few of them among us. So, uh, respect. Thanks, Don. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thank thanks, you Jesse. Very much. Peace. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, um, guys. Thank you all. Um, I, any any last words? Did you? What did you all learn from this? This must have been a life altering experience for you, Afshin. I, I haven't worked in documentaries before. I don't know if I'll do another doc after this, but this was really a, a pleasure, both collaborating with, oh, excuse me, collaborating with, with Glenn, which we've done on several projects, but then, you know, having Tommy, um, not only as the subject, but now as, as a friend and, and, and a mentor and someone, you know, that I've always looked up to, but to be able to say that we are friends and I shake his hand and talk to him regularly uh, is, is really amazing really grateful for it. Glenn? Yeah, no, definitely life-changing. I mean, we signed up to do a small project, not knowing how big it is. And, and now we're on the legacy team, you know, helping, uh, you, you know, connect to our, our past to our future in uh, very powerful ways. So, so it's been an honor um, working with not only Jesse F. Sheen, John and the entire team, uh, but, but really, you know, it's with an incredible sense of responsibility that we, we have to do that and keep uh, paying all of Tommy's effort forward. So thank you so much, Don, for, for being yeah. part of this. What yeah, well, thank you guys for making this happen, really. I mean, th it's fantastic. And Tommy, I'm going to give you the last word. As you know, I have, you know how much respect, maybe you don't know how much respect I have for you. I love having you on my show on CNN. Um, I thought I had read everything about you, but through this documentary, I learned so much. It helped me. I laughed. I cried. Um, I think you should, you should have gotten those legs. You should have gotten a mole made of those as well, because that, I mean, that carried all of us over the finish line, my brother. That's our next movement. <laughs> exactly. And to, the young, <laughs> to the young folks out there, uh, we want you to know uh, that we're trying very hard and uh, uh, what you see is uh, uh, what we do is what you must become. It's a pride and joy of being humanistic attitude toward all people. Thank you all. I really enjoyed it. I'm honored to be a part of this. Yeah, thanks, Don. Talk to you soon.